Welcome back, everybody. This is Menopause Taylor welcoming you to Menopause, the state of menopause in the world today. I am Menopause Barbie, your Menopause Taylor, and if you've been with me for any length of time, you know that I'm a gynecologist, so I know about a lot more things than just menopause. At any time, a general gynecologic issue pertains to menopause in any way, I teach you about it. So you get to learn about all sorts of things that are not strictly limited to menopause. And one of those things that affects many women is fibroids. So this podcast is a tutorial on fibroids. Now, you can well imagine that there's more to fibroids than what I can cover in a single podcast. So there will be three podcasts on fibroids. This one addresses what fibroids are. The next one will address the effect of menopause on fibroids, and the one after that will address your ability to take HRT if you have fibroids. So let's begin with the word fibroids <laughs> or fibroids of the uterus. That reminds me, when I was a resident in obstetrics and gynecology, we took care of a lot of indigent uneducated, and non-English-speaking patients. I did my medical training in the largest medical center in the world, the Texas Medical Center. And many patients didn't understand the terms that we used for things. You know, we in medicine have our own language. And fibroids of the uterus was one of the terms that a lot of people didn't understand. And since many of these women couldn't read or understand English, they just interpreted our medical words as best they could. One of the most common misinterpretations was fibroids of the uterus. So one day, <laughs> I had a patient who came in and said she had fireballs of the Eucharist. <laughs> now, I'm pretty good about miming patients and using their words to communicate with them. If they say, I hurt down there, I'll adopt the term down there to refer to their genitalia. Or if they call their urethra their wee-wee, I'll call it their wee-wee. But this time, I, I had to pause a bit, and then it hit me. <laughs> she was repeating what she had heard. Since the word fibroids was unfamiliar and the word uterus was unfamiliar, she heard words with which she was familiar. Fireballs of the Eucharist were fibroids of the uterus. <laughs> In any case, gynecology encompasses a whole lot more than gynecology. It involves communication skills, psychology, human relations, you name it. So let's talk about fibroids of the uterus. Now, fibroids of the uterus is not the medical term for what we're discussing today, but you probably wish it were because the medical term is not an easy one to remember. The medical term for fibroids of the uterus is uterine leiomyomata. <laughs> I can only imagine what my patient would have repeated if she'd heard that term. <laughs> that one is a difficult term for anybody. So you won't hear me say that again. I'll use the word fibroids. Okay, so what does the word fibroid sound like? It sounds like the word fibrous right? Fibrous. And that's convenient because fibroids resemble fibrous tissue. So that's how they got their name, fibroids. Now, fibroids can grow in your uterus. And here's how that happens. Your uterus consists of two types of tissue, muscular tissue and fibrous tissue. The muscular tissue is what enables your uterus to do what any other muscle can do. It can relax, it can stretch, and it can contract. So, it's like Play-Doh. If you have Play-Doh, it would represent the muscular tissue of your uterus. And most of the time, it's just hanging out, relaxing. But when you get pregnant, it stretches. Imagine stretching the Play-Doh to accommodate the growing baby. And when it's time to deliver the baby or it needs to expel your period, it can contract so it can squeeze down on itself. Your uterine muscle needs something to give it support. So it has fiber. 
Fiber is the same thing that supports plants. Have you ever wondered how it is that a plant can grow upward, defying gravity? Well, it's because it has fiber. So fiber is like the skeleton for a plant. It gives it support. Well, in your uterus, you have fiber too, but it's more like little flakes, like little flakes sprinkled throughout the uterine muscle. It's sprinkled all around. And a fibroid develops when a particle of that fibrous tissue starts growing within the muscular tissue of your uterus. And it starts out very, very tiny. But over time, it grows slowly and it gets bigger. And then it gets even bigger. And it can keep growing. It can get much, much bigger than you could ever imagine. It can get so big that it's much larger than the uterus itself. So fibroids are masses of fibrous tissue that grow in your uterine muscle. And usually there isn't just one fibroid. They tend to occur in multiples. It's common to find six, eight, 12 fibroids in a single uterus. Now, over time, as multiple fibroids grow, your uterus goes from looking like a perfectly shaped upside down pear to looking like a malformed bulbous structure that is completely irregular in shape. And fibroids are usually white pearly balls of tissue. And these white pearly balls of tissue distort the uterus so that it's completely irregular and it's much larger than it should be overall. So when you have a normal uterus compared to a fibroid uterus, fibroid uterus, they usually vary in size greatly. The fibroid uterus can be many, 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 many times the size of a normal uterus. And we, we designate how large a fibroid uterus is by comparing it to the size of a pregnancy. So you might have fibroids that are the size of a seven month pregnancy or a five month pregnancy. That's how we do it. We do it in weeks, not months, but that is how we adjust uh, designate the size because your uterus can get that big. Now, in a fibroid uterus, the fibroids can be in various locations. So, a fibroid can be deep, deep, deep inside the uterus, right next to your uterine lining, the, on the inside, the same lining that you shed with your period. A fibroid can be that deep in your uterus. The name for a fibroid there is submucus. Or a fibroid can be right in the middle of the thick, wall of the uterus. Your uterine wall is thick between the inside and the outside. A fibroid can be right in the middle of it. We call those fibroids intramural. Mural means wall. So it's between the walls, in to inside the wall, intramural. So if you speak other languages, the word for wall often derives from the base word mur, and that's why intramural works for that kind of a fibroid. Or a fibroid can be near the outside, outer surface of your uterus, far from the inner lining. And the name for those is subserosal. And there's even one more kind of fibroid. A fibroid can dangle off the outer surface of the uterus or dangle from the inner surface of your uterus on a stalk. And in that case, it looks like a mushroom. It's like got a stalk with a big bulb on the top of the stalk and it dangles either inside the uterus or outside of the uterus. And we have a name for those too. They're called pedunculated, pedunculated pedicle. Pedunculated comes from the word pedicle. Now, 
Most women who have fibroids have a variety of these. They usually have all those different kinds of fibroids in all the different locations so that their uterus looks kind of like an alien thing. It's just got all these lumps and bumps and big round balls of white fibrous tissue all over it. So it's just completely distorted. Now, if you look at a fibroid uterus, you would look at it and go, holy cow, does that mean fibroids are cancerous? And the answer is no, fibroids are benign, but they sure look bizarre. They're actually very, very common too. They're present in at least 40% of women. Some autopsy findings suggest that they're present in 50% of women after the age of 40. But they're very, very rare before the age of 20. So what happens between your 20s and your 40s to cause fibroids? Oh, you have periods pregnancies. And what fuels your periods and pregnancies? Estrogen. So estrogen is what make, makes fibroids grow. Now most women don't even know they have them. Most of the time they cause no symptoms, but as they get larger and larger and larger, or more numerous, they can cause a variety of symptoms, including heavy bleeding, abnormal bleeding, pelvic pain, or pelvic pressure. And here's why they cause bleeding. Remember that I told you your uterus is a muscle? Well, that means it can contract. So anytime there's bleeding, your uterus contracts to squeeze on the blood vessels and stop the bleeding. But with a fibroid in the way, the uterine muscle cannot contract. It tries to contract, but the fibroid is in the way. So instead of being able to clamp down on the blood vessels by using a contraction, the uterus can't contract, and so it keeps bleeding. This is why women with fibroids may have heavy bleeding with their periods, or they may bleed between periods. And all those attempts at contracting to stop the bleeding are painful. So your menstrual cramps were nothing but contractions of your uterine muscle. Were they painful? And labor pains are nothing but uterine contractions to expel a baby. Were they painful? Well, that's why women with fibroids can have pelvic pain. And fibroids are hard. They're heavy. And the bigger they get, the more they weigh. And all that extra weight just sits on all your pelvic structures, pressing down on them. So many women with fibroids have pelvic pressure. Now, normally fibroids grow very slowly, but pregnancy makes them grow more rapidly. And as long as they cause no symptoms and are growing very slowly and are not too large, you can just ignore them. If they do cause symptoms or grow quickly, or they get too large, you may have to do something about them. And the treatments depend, differ depending on the fibroid size, location, your symptoms, as well as your reproductive desires. 